Okay, so Paul Kent, suspended in a Rail 360 heist, has been found not guilty uh, following a two-day trial uh, in Sydney of assault. Now, we've covered this from the beginning. He's been suspended from uh, Fox League and the Daily Telegraph for seven months, for the best part. Um, he protested his innocence. He did state at the time when he was formally charged at magistrates that he had the backing of management. Um, he did state that. It's going to be interesting to see now, considering the reputational damage and what's come out in court about um, his private life, um, whether, obviously, um, Fox Sports um, reinstall him as co-host of NRL 360 and other programming, that other related programming, and whether the Daily Telegraph get him back as a frontline reporter. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see if he's back at work as soon as tomorrow. Uh, because both in the newspaper industry uh, and also writing on sport, you know, news websites, advertising is key. It's a key part of revenue um, because certain sports websites, certain media websites where there's articles written, there's no subscription fee required and there are others where there is a subscription fee required. Same in regards for uh, Foxtel. It is a subscription service. I've got a subscription to the NRL. Uh, via uh, the NRL website. Uh, even so, when I'm watching live programming, there is advertising. Now, that's on the live Australian feed. If I'm watching on replay, however, there's no advertising. So, it's that's a subscription-based service. But when it is live TV, again, while they have a subscription, you know, subscribers and they pay, still reliant heavily. On the advertising revenue so what's going to be interesting is if he does and if and when he does return to work if certain advertisers and certain companies via their advertising agencies go we don't want our brand or our company advertising when paul kent is on the tv because of the the, the reputation of paul kent now as, as an aggressive person uh, his private life's now obviously been splashed about in the press and that PR that you know that reputational damage can he rebuild his reputation can he rebuild his the trust within um with his work colleagues with with the players when he's interviewing players and coaches and and, and club executives can that relationship there be rebuilt um and you know we'll we'll you know we'll have to wait and see if he does get back on NRL 36 and if he does get front and centre on the TV again. He is a well-known personality. He's a very colourful personality. He's a very aggressive personality. He's a very divisive figure as well. So we'll have to see how that plays out. As I say, I've discussed, uh, you know, everything that's led up to this point before. But one thing did strike me. And that was back in September. Uh, an article was published by the Sydney Morning Herald where he was interviewed and he was working part-time for a funeral home as a limo driver. So does that suggest that potentially he could leave um, Fox Sports and the Daily Telegraph? Because he did hint in the interview he gave that he was considering at some point um, having a career change and actually going into running a funeral home. And, and the funeral home business or um, the limo business. He, he did hint at a potential um, career change. So has his relationship soured with his employers? Um, how much, you know, uh, whilst he was suspended, how much pay was he receiving? Because that's another thing to consider was, you know, you know did, he, did he have the full backing of management or was that just saying that publicly? But in reality, the backing wasn't there. Has the relationship between himself and his employers broken down? Has the relationship between himself and his colleagues broken down? Because there was media silence for the best part of six and a half months in regards to this situation. Uh, but if this was a player or a coach, that would have been a free-for-all for months and months and months. Social media would have been a meltdown because it had been constantly in the news cycle. This has not been in the news cycle for the best part of seven months, six and a half months. So we'll have to see what the reaction is uh, on social media in the next day or so. Uh, you know, are you know rugby league fans happy that he could potentially be back on NRL three hundred and sixty and potentially writing for the Daily Telegraph again? Um, or, or, you know, would, would that potentially 
turn off fans of NRL 360 and viewers of, of, of you know, Fox Sports going, no, I don't want to be, I don't, you know, no. Because he's not the only high-profile sports journalist or ex-player or current player, for that matter, to be embroiled in this situation. Mason Greenwood and Benjamin Mendy have had to leave English football and play over on the continent. And there are a lot of fans that have been very happy with them still playing. Um, they, they, they really cop it. They cop it on social media and they cop it from the fans in stadiums. Now, there, there are those who will defend those guys to the hilt. You know, Benjamin Mendy was found not guilty of the charges against him. Mason Greenwood, he didn't make trial. That doesn't mean he's out of the woods yet, but he, he's left Man United. He's on loan in Spain. And Benjamin Mendy left Man City and ended up playing in France. So that's on the sportsman side of things. Paul Kent's case, will he end up, you know, leaving uh, Foxtel and going over to Channel 9, for example, a rival broadcaster? Will he end up leaving the Daily Telegraph and the Murdoch Group of newspapers and end up working for a rival newspaper, for example, because relationships are broken down? You know, will he end up leaving the media industry altogether? We'll have to wait and see. But what, what do you make of all this? Um, should he return to host NRL 360, considering he's been found not guilty? Will he return to host NRL 360 now that he's been found not guilty at trial? Will he end up, you know, writing full time for the Daily Telegraph? Should he end up, you know, returning to the Daily Telegraph because he's been found not guilty? Did the, the social media side of things uh, have an impact? You know, what will happen? So there we go. Thank you very much for watching. Place your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll have some more content for you very, very soon.